Hello ladies and gentlemen, Sanfam of the Metaverse. How are you guys doing today? I am Vipaya, your Game Maker Community Manager. Are you having a nice Wednesday? <laughs> anyone upload a new game to the draft gallery for the new game jam? I don't know if anyone has. Haven't checked. Um, all right. Hey, Wicked You. Hey, Beer is not. Hello, Garnikin. You three are here already. That's great to see. Um, I'm not sure if this stream is going to be entirely, um, entirely as long as usual because I have been swamped with a lot of work yet lately and I am mentally uh, very drained right now. <laughs> and also I have much that I need to do. I have quite a few meetings in the afternoon as well. So I need to prepare for those. Um, but we will nonetheless do the stream and we will have a little chat. Um, I thought that would be a nicer thing to do for the time being um, because we can just have a, a nice little chat about uh, things to do with the Game Maker, with Game Jams um, and stuff like that. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of the two or something else related to the sandbox or something else entirely, feel free to shoot. Um, I'll an answer whenever I can and stuff. So, you know, shoot. Um, all right, so I think we jump into starting with Game Jams. Uh, let me change the screen so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. Game Jams. We've got an ongoing Game Jam right now, Heroes vs. Villains. It ends on Sunday. Um, if you're new to the sandbox or to the Game Maker, Highly recommend that you take part in game jams. This one is already kind of halfway, so it might be a bit late, but you know, you could still do it if you wanted to. If you're well versed in the sandbox and in the game maker, if you're a veteran, if you've already created many games, still a good idea to take part in game jams. Um, the reason I say this is because there are many benefits to doing so. And also we are going to be upgrading the game jams pretty soon. Um, there's going to be some exciting changes um, some changes to the prizes as well that I am sure you guys will be very excited for. Um, but apart from that, baseline, game jams are great for you as a new creator, as an experienced creator. Um, because of this, I've made a little section in our uh, Medium articles so that you can have a quick overview of you know, what makes game jams attractive? Why participate in game jams in the sandbox? Of course, prizes. I mean, who doesn't like prizes? Who doesn't like the prospect of being able to win a nice little, uh, little or big uh, reward? <laughs> um, everybody likes prizes. It gives you exposure. We are always trying to make sure that we spotlight creators uh, that take part or and particularly place in top 10 or in the honorable mentions um, on social media, Discord, etc. So, you know, you get exposure as someone who um, participates in game jams. Also, uh, you get opportunities to get onboarded in GMF, uh, get published, things like that. So definitely very good for your image if you wish to sort of establish yourself as a creator within the ecosystem. Um, also, it builds your resume rather speedily because these are two week contests um, and, you know, that's a really fast way to build a game. Of course, that means that you are going to be working hard because making games is something that takes time. Um, you will be working very hard in these two weeks of the contest, but it is a very speedy way to increase or improve your resume. So you'll quickly have games um, in your resume that people can see that you have done. Um, and also they are great templates to build on. Usually game jams um, are not necessarily complete games. Of course, they have to be complete as a submission, but they are really good to build on because you've spent very little time on them. They are made to be a complete game, but there is usually room for expanding on the game and improving on the games. Um, so these are really good ways to kind of just quickly spit out a bunch of games and get rewards in progress, uh, in the progress and process. Super good. Also, um, you get to enhance your skills when I joined the sandbox back in 21, uh, the end of 21, the first thing I did was participate in a game jam before anything else. I didn't know the game maker, didn't know anything. I just jumped straight into it and participated for the two weeks that it took. Uh, and 
I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot as a new creator in a very, very little amount of time. As an experienced creator, game jams really push you to, you know, enhance your creativity, make you find in interesting mechanics that you can implement. So it's a great way to sort of explore the tools and improve yourself. Of course, you also uh, get to participate in the community of the game maker, especially the creator community. It's a great way to to engage with the community and like minded people um, because we have a lot of good chats in the discord um, for for game makers and game jam participants. I'm going to link the discord in case we have anyone who is not in there. I highly encourage that you get there because every Every single announcement in relation to um, Game Maker and Game Jams will be in there, in the Discord. I will also make minor updates, which usually don't make it all the way to Twitter. The major updates, major changes, etc. Usually uh, they do make it to Twitter, but um, you know Twitter has a lot of other content. Our main, uh, the Sandbox Twitter, has a lot of other content. Things can get lost. Um, if you join the Discord, this is a great way to, to keep track of everything that's going on. All right, so the current game jam, uh, Heroes vs. Villains, we're halfway through. Um, so I'm not going to go through too much of the details of what it's all about, because the people who are going to participate are probably already working on it and already know what it's all about. We've got our usual top 10. We've got our up to 10 uh, honorable mentions, rising stars and or new newcomers. Um, we have a nice voxel uh, voxel creation by our artists who participated in the Heroes vs. Villains box edit contest. Uh, so if you want to explore that one and buy an asset and use in your game there, feel free to do so. They're really awesome assets. Uh, do you remember that submission closes on 27th, that is on Sunday at 3 p.m. UTC. Please do not update your game after that. Um, and also, just a reminder, please read the rules. Please read the important guidelines. Please read everything in this article. <laughs> read everything. Also, if you've participated before, also in the next game jam, if you participated in this one, because sometimes there are changes, sometimes there are clarifications, and it doesn't take you that long. Also, always read through the submission form because there might be important details there that might be useful for you to know in advance. All right, so let, let's uh, let's stop here with the game jams. Uh, and let's quickly have a look at the chat because stuff is happening. Um, Gone again is saying stuff. He said, I got a question when uploading my game jam. I am getting warnings. The game plays fine in the gallery. Should I panic? What does it mean you're getting warnings? What kind of warnings? Um, okay, Biosyn was also asking what kind of warning. Something about child and plants can't check it from work. Hmm. Ooh, a chat is going on. I don't want to sit and, and read an entire discussion in chat because I, I'll just sit here and say nothing. Um, I'm not entirely sure um, what that's about, um, Garnikin, but if you still have issues with it after the stream, why don't you head on over to, to Discord and add, ask there because I'll be able to, to get back to you there. A little more in detail all right okay so we also have a vox edit contest that is still running at this time it's the dance fight vox edit contest um it was extended i believe from the 20th if i don't remember wrong to august 25th at 11 59 p.m utc please make sure you convert this time zone so that you don't get the times wrong um Contest is extended. You need to create a an NPC with a unique original dance move um, animated onto it, especially by you. So do make sure that you include that. Um, after stage one, you will win prizes if your um, submission is awesome. <laughs> uh, prizes are stated here. There's also a stage two of the dance fight showdown um, where you'll be co collaborating with real dancers from dance fight and you'll recreate a dance move performed by the pros um, if you complete stage two you will also be uh, getting a uh, you'll be able to mint their uh, your NPC, your character what you created for the for the contest and you'll get a wild one avatar righto 
that is the ongoing contest. We also have ongoing events happening. Currently, if you are the kind of person who likes to play, uh, we've got the Cut the Rope event going on. It ends on the 25th, so you don't have that much time. If you want to participate for a share of the 100, 000, uh, 120,000 sand pool and uh, the 10 Omnoms money boxes, um, and also McNuggets Lands uh, event is still active also for a little while longer until the 28th um, and you get a share of the 100,000 uh, sand pool and a mystery box also Elvis week has started yay <laughs> Elvis week has started do participate if you want to uh, have a, a share in the prize pool and it ends on August 30th don't forget to play hello mosquito and hello Dracusha. Am I missing anyone? Arwil is asking, will you play uh, Playboy Game Jams today on stream? I will not, Arwil, because as I mentioned at the very beginning of the stream, uh, I am going to make this a short stream. It's actually already... Oh no, it's not. Um, yeah, I'm going to make this a short stream, possibly just like another 15 uh, max 20 minutes, I think, because I have much that I need to do. Uh, I've got a field meetings in the afternoon that I need to prepare for, some things that I still need to catch up on. Um, the last few weeks have been rather hectic. I've had lots of late afternoon and evening meetings and, um, you know, some oopsies, uh, top priority tasks that I've had to prioritize and uh, pay a lot of attention to. So. I've had plenty to do and I still have plenty to do, so we are going to make, keep it short for today, I'm afraid. Um, which means no Playboy uh, entries being played on stream, unfortunately. Um, probably Alex will play that, I assume. Um, he usually plays Playboy, uh, not Playboy entries, but Game Jam entries on his streams. Um, probably tonight? I would assume that's not entirely unlikely that he's going to be playing it tonight on his streams um, or morning or I don't know what time it is for whoever uh, is out there. But later today on this Wednesday, Alex is also going to stream. I believe it is 6 p.m. UTC. Uh, no, it's not. This is not 6 p.m. UTC. That's the Saturday one. Um, the Wednesday one is, I don't know, 9 p.m. UTC. Okay, don't take my word for it. I don't remember right now off the top of my head. <laughs> um, but do join that one. I think he will likely be playing Game Jam entries there. All righto. Um, okay. I don't think there are any more questions that I should be answering. Yeah. All right. So we have recently updated to 0. 0.8. 8.7, um, a version that came out very, very soon after we launched the Hero vs. Villains game jams. And if any of you have not um, noted that, we have made an update that it is allowed for this game jam for you to um, build your game on either 0.8.6 or 0.8.7. Um, there should only be very few minor um, changes and audio added so it shouldn't really be any particular problem uh, that we are um, using both versions however i have included in the submission form um, a question of whether your game is built on one or the other version just so that we are aware um, you know if your game turns out super buggy we might know that um, if we're playing it in a different version perhaps that's because of that so it's a good little note to have just in case something goes goes wrong after all um but otherwise we have 0 0.8.7 that is the newest version and um a small bean not a real bean but a small bean you know 0 0.9 is not so far away it is within scope and I am not going to tell you anything about when that is, but it is within scope and it is going to be super exciting when that releases. Um, there are some amazing changes coming. Amazing changes coming that you guys are going to be really excited about. You are going to be excited about it. There's no question. 
<laughs> that's really it's really it's an amazing update and I cannot wait for you guys to get access to it um, but you know it is still soon to end there is no official date and you know I can't tell you that is within this amount of time it's just um, you know soonish <laughs> it's within scope um, we will have an update to um, the rule system not going to go into any details about that but exciting things are going to be coming to that um, for now when working with rules the rule system I just thought I would go over that because in the last few streams we've done game maker 101 uh, tutorial streams where we've talked about basics we've talked um, you know how to navigate the whole uh, interface of the game maker we have taught how uh, the different behaviors work I was supposed to be going through the components today, but I'm not going to because that takes a lot of time. There's a lot of them um, and a lot to talk about, so I'm not going to do that. But I thought I would quickly go through the rule system um, in this current version, which, as I said, uh, is probably um, very likely to <laughs> be subject to change in the upcoming 0.9 update. Update? Not update. Um, but for now, this is how it looks. So why not have a look at it, right? Um, we have got an option to turn on a welcome screen. Generally, I don't use that, but you can. If you turn it on, you get to, um, you know, decide how you want to welcome the player. You can have an image welcoming. Um, you can have the camera welcoming you. Hey, Dan Coy. <laughs> and you can choose where you want the camera to be focused on. If you have a fat camera welcoming, it can focus on the avatar that the player is spawning in with or the center of the world. You can choose the distance of the camera from the set, um, you know, uh, what is that? Camera mode thing. Um, and also you can uh, add asset rarities count. That means if you if you turn that on on a welcoming screen, you're going to have a little list of the amount of uh, legendary, epic, rare, uh, uncommon and props uh, that you have been using in building your experience. Um, I don't generally see a whole lot of use for that, but you know, I don't know if any of you might find some use for it, but that's what it does. Um, the level name will show, you know, the name of, of the game or the level, if that is what you, if you would like to add a different name or a name that is similar to whatever your, your name was, uh, your game was called in the gallery or on the map, wherever it is published, you can make a short description and you can add some music from the library to go with the, with the welcoming screen. You can also display objectives. That means you will see a list of the quests that are included in your game if you choose that. Excuse me. I am, I've got a really dry mouth, so I might be drinking more than usual. <laughs> okay, so quests. Um, you can turn this off if you don't want quests in your experience. Generally, you probably want some level of quests or you could introduce other types of missions, I suppose, crowd events, um, for example. Um, but turning on quests will allow you to add different types of quests. So you choose a quest name, you choose a quest description, you choose whether the, the quest should be available um, to pick up at the beginning of the game or if it requires a message to become active so to say or available um, if you don't choose anything if you just choose auto unlock you can always uh, pick up that quest launching the quest um, you can choose auto launch it'll launch at the beginning of your game or you can choose requires message which means it'll only be launched once a message is sent to this uh, whatever message you add um, once that message has been sent out, it will launch the quest that can be, for example, when a quest giver say, hey, let's do this or go and do this for me. And you say, OK, then a message is sent to the quest to start the quest. All right. Quest type. Yeah, we have a few different quest types. We've got a counter quest. Counter quest can be um, divided into two main categories. Collected objects uh, means that you can collect um, an amount of objects or items um, you can add a tag or you should add a tag to those items say you want to collect five gems so you tag them with excuse me with gems 
um, and then you remember to actually go here. Uh, what am I? What am I clicking here? You remember to go here. Um, I'm going to find a gem. Here is a gem that I've created for a game gem I participated in a long time ago. All right, we tag it with gem. Now, if the um, player collects this gem, they are going to get. Uh, it's going to count towards that quest. Remember to give it the collectible component so that you can actually. Uh, so that you can actually collect it. When you are um, adding collectible components, always, always make sure it's just no collision because uh, it, it doesn't make sense otherwise. It's very annoying to bump into something that you can collect. Uh, you might find it confusing if you're new um, that collectible um, action required says collision, but there is no collision on the asset. If that's confusing for you, uh, let me let me elaborate. Even though the asset itself has no collision, if you walk over it, you will still collide with it. It just won't stop you. It won't like be like walking into something. You'll go through it, but it'll still act as, you know, colliding with the object and it'll collect it. So in case that was confusing, that's sorted out. Remember to add the tag. I don't know what happened. I didn't add the tag. Um, remember to type enter once you've written the tag name. Maybe that's what I forgot. Um, otherwise it won't add the tag. So here we go, we've got a gem uh, with a tag and we need to collect five of them. That's how you do a collect quest. Um, here we've got quest completion, it'll auto complete right now by, by default. Um, if you collect all five gems, you can make it only complete once a message is received. For example, if you hand it into a quest giver um, and they say, oh, thank you. And then you get a message uh, to complete the quest. All right. so. Another thing you can do is once the quest is complete, you can send a message out or you can not send the message out if you want to. You can also make the quest end the game once it's complete. So there are a few different things, but if you want to, for example, create a quest chain, you can uh, you can have it send a message to start the next quest upon completing this one. Uh, that's just an example of what you can do with the action after completion thing. All right, the other type of counter uh, counter quest is deaths, uh, meaning that you um, you can choose, you can again tag assets that the player needs to uh, kill. You don't necessarily have to make this enemies such as, you know, um, skeletons or something like that. It could be um, created just killing 10 skeletons. That could be the, the quest, but it could also be like just destroying generators or something like that. Anything with a health bar that means that you are destroying it uh, will count towards counter deaths. And asset deaths is you're going to be tracking a specific asset on the map. Um, if that asset is destroyed, it will complete the quest. That's basically what asset death quests mean. A timer. Honestly, the asset death quest, by the way, you could you could pretty easily do that with a counter quest as well, just by making the counter one, and only tagging the uh, the asset that you want uh, to to count towards this. That's also possible. Uh, timer quest is very straightforward. It is a timed quest. <laughs> so um, you have by default set 30 seconds and then you can select what is your goal for uh, this timed event or timed quest. Uh, if you have the default goal of surviving, if you are alive by the time the quest ends, it completes and you are uh, and, and you win or not by the time that, you, that it completes. You have to not die within the 30 seconds. Um, if you are chose, uh, if you choose defend, uh oh, I have an alarm going off. Excuse me. All right. Oh, it's already twelve. All right. Let's just go through the last uh, different types of quests. Defending a uh, goal for timed quests means that you can choose an asset that you need to defend, as in you need to make sure it does not get destroyed. So you could have enemies that are attacking a generator. Now I'm just going to use generator as a general example. You could have assets uh, or en enemies that are attacking the generator and you need to make sure that they don't destroy it. So you choose the generator from this list if you have a generator um, and you uh, the player has to kill whatever is trying to defeat it or destroy it so that you don't, you know, lose the quest. 
Another thing is message needed. So basically this is the most diverse choice. Um, if the timer is 30 seconds, you need to achieve something that sends out the specified message. You'll speci you can specify here what the message is. Um, let's say quest default complete. Um, once that message is received, you will, uh, you will complete the quest. If you have not received that message within the time, um, the 30 seconds, the quest will fail. So this could be something like a message that is sent out once you collect a message or once you speak to someone or once you reach uh, a particular place. So it could be like a race thing. If you, um, if you reach the end line, there'll be a speaker that detects you and sends a message. Um, that could be a use for it. Um, so yeah, that's what the timer does and that's what the different goals also do. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Do we have anything else? We have wait for message. Yes, of course. Um, wait for message. Again, super diverse quest uh, type. You can do a lot with the with the wait for message quest um, because basically it will just wait for a message to be sent to it before it completes. So it could be pretty much anything. It could be completing dialogue, it could be collecting something, it could be killing something and then a message is sent out once that's dead. It could be literally anything, pretty much. Um, just remember to add a good description and a, and a title so that the player knows what to do. Um, but this one is a very diverse one and, and if you if if your quest does not fit in under any of these other categories, usually you can achieve anything you want with this type of quest. Righto. I think that's pretty much it for the rules system at the moment. Uh, we'll have a look at everything that's changed when it changes. <laughs> Um, if there are any more questions, um, quick questions, because we're going to end it uh, within the next few minutes as I have to get on. Um, if there are any more questions about game makeup, about game jams in particular, um, do let me know. If any of you weren't here in the beginning, big changes are coming for game jams, exciting changes are coming for game jams, and I am looking forward to sharing that with you. Right now we do have the active Heroes vs Villains game jam. There are no uh, like big changes that have happened for this particular one. There are some small things, so do remember to read. Um, but a lot of big things are coming and you will be seeing that within the next uh, couple of months probably. Um, so that is that for today. Um, Quickly, let me just quickly go over the other uh, Vox Edit contest that's going on in case someone wasn't there when I mentioned it. Uh, we do have the Dance Fight Vox Edit contest going on in case you didn't know. Um, deadline has been extended to the 25th of August. Um, so you still have time to participate for a couple of days. If you want to, you need to create an NPC with a unique animated dance move. Um, so make sure you add that original dance move to your uh, to your character, otherwise it doesn't qualify. Um, you can win amazing prizes if you complete stage one, if you complete stage two as well, um, which is, you know, by you will be collaborating with real dancers from Dance Fight uh, to cre recreate dance moves performed by them. If you complete the stage, um, you will also be able to mint the NPC that you entered the contest with and also get a Wild One avatar. Awesome stuff, everybody. Um, do you participate and also remember to participate in game jams always. Honestly, whenever you are able to, just do it. I think it's brilliant for you, whether you're new or well-versed in the environment or in the ecosystem. This gives you lots of skill enhancement. It gives you plenty of uh, experience and it gives you some games to add to your resume and some games that you can continue working on if you want to. Opportunities of uh, being onboarded in GMF and opportunities of being published, things like that. Um, really good stuff and always a good idea to participate in these contests. Alrighty, everybody. I hope uh, you had a good time today this in this short little stream and um, I'll see you on next Wednesday for I, I think a normal <laughs> a normal stream normal Wednesday tutorial stream um, and do 
contact me on Discord, uh, Garnican, if you haven't already. If you did not figure out the, the answer to your question earlier this stream, uh, you can you can let me know in Discord and I'll I'll have a look at it. Uh, but otherwise, anyone who have any other questions related to game maker and game jams, it is a good idea to head over to Discord. I'm going to link it once more. Here you go, invite link to Discord. If you're not there, you should be. Uh, this is the best way to receive um, updates and also engage with the community uh, of the sandbox. All right, everyone, see you next Wednesday and also tomorrow night when I co-host with Panda Pops, the Vox Edit Community Manager, where we are going to be playing some of the event games. Um, I'm assuming from the Elvis week, uh, event going on I think is what we are going to be focusing on um, so see you there or on Monday or on on Thursday or not Thursday or on Wednesday, next Wednesday see you then everybody have a good Wednesday and rest of your week bye bye